Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. Tisha here, back for another Sister Wives Season 16 recap. This is going to be about part two of the one-on-one -on -one, and all it did was make me realize how pathetic the feather people are. Christina's had every opportunity to throw those people. You know how he likes to say those people when he talks about the family. She had every opportunity to throw those feathers under the bus and she didn't. She showed up here in a good place, happy, glad that she's left this man and ready to face this without having to throw mud. She is handling it with so much grace. Meanwhile, the bald eagle and his bird are not. She knows a lot about Robum, Sabum, Librows, Nike Checks, whatever we call her. And yet she couldn't be more kind in the way that she's talking about her. And I'm sitting here and I'm saying to myself, it couldn't be me. There's no way it could be me. The way that that bird manages to cry without shedding a tear, the way that she makes all the sounds, yet nothing happens, it amazes me. And it's magical. But all it really does is just show how manipulative she is. I don't know how she does it. I don't know how they did it. I don't know how for so many years the wives put up with this, with her fake acting, with her trying to act like she's oh so distraught and she's oh so emotional, yet she's not because she's going through all of this. She's making all the sniffles and yet there's nothing coming out, like not a single cheer. So here's the deal. This episode was a lot of stuff that we've seen. I'm gonna talk about certain stuff if I forget to put something in there that you want to talk about, feel free to put it down below. Go ahead and do me a favor and like the video as we begin. We pick up the episode with Christine. Suki brings up how hard... <laughs> I'm jacking up already. Suki brings up how it's been six months and the bald eagle finally came up with the rules. We get a flashback of Christine's famous, what does the nanny do? Christine didn't feel like it was fair that the nanny was able to come by their house and work in their house, but her kids were not. She said it was something that Isabel was bothered by. I want to know how the kids even knew that the nanny was in the house. Were they told? Was it a text message going on between siblings and they said, oh, I got to stop and do things with my, my nanny? How do they know that the nanny was still there? Just something I'm wondering. She said, I was honest about the things that I was doing. I was honest about going out of town, but they simply didn't trust me. Suki asks the bird, why weren't the rules handed out sooner? And the bird claims that she wonders the same thing. But that is a lie because if you had already been following these rules, if you sat there telling the, the parents, I've been doing it for seven months and you're nodding your head and you're and doing all of that, then why couldn't you text those rules to the other mothers a long time ago when they first asked for them? Why are you sitting here trying to act like you were waiting on Cody to hand out those rules? If the rules already existed, wouldn't you have them prior? Wouldn't you have them saved? Wouldn't they be hung up on the wall or in your phone or something? It's because the rules didn't exist. Suki doesn't get it because she's like, you were around him the whole time. If anybody could tell him anything, I would think it would be you. And she's like, he was grumpy. She said she asked, you know, him if he was going to do it. And he's like, you know, everybody's going to be like, no, nobody will do it. She's like, he was getting kicked back for just basic stuff, trying to act like he didn't hand out the rules because he was afraid of what they were going to say. Hand them out and just see so they know what they're in for. But he, they, they weren't there. Christine didn't understand why no one asked about what the nanny was doing to make it safe for her to come in the house. She admits that she probably would have asked sooner, but she didn't really care to be around Cody. And had it not been for her kids, she wouldn't have asked at all because her and Cody at that point were not getting along and she didn't mind being apart from him. 
She says that the bald eagle came over a couple of times, maybe for a couple of hours a week, but they barely saw him. And it just didn't make sense to follow his strict protocol when he wasn't even there. Cody likes to blame his absence on the pandemic, but he became absent before the pandemic. Janelle in season 18 and 19 has even said this, that COVID just made it worse. And it did because if she's having to call you and remind you that you're supposed to come over to her house, you obviously weren't coming over to her house. Bald, Bald Eagle has a problem with some of the ladies choosing their adult kids over him. According to him, when they're tender ages, you protect them. But once they're adults, it changes. No, it does not. You protect them, period. I'm in a transitional period with my son. My son will be 18 next month on Thanksgiving. And I am adjusting to that transition because him being an adult at 18, so they say, he's still not really an adult, but I've been preparing him to do more adult things. So there are certain things that he's doing now that prior to this, I would have helped him with, or I would have done for him, or I would have been like this. It's like my car. He has my old car. I got a newer car. Uh, You're going to put gas in that car. You're going to pay car insurance on that car. You wanted a, the car so badly, you're going to pay car insurance on that car. You're going to do things. You're going to take the car to get an oil change. You're going to do things that adults do. That to me is something that you should put upon your kids. But you shouldn't be like, up, 18, get out. Especially because it's not something that you've done. They're still under your, your care. I said it before. I was struggling to find a car out here. I, I couldn't, I live around a bunch of military people and military people, for whatever reason, decide to waste their money and buy up all the cars, <laughs> at least the ones I wanted. So my dad took it upon himself to find the car for me. He helped me find the vehicle that I wanted. Guess what? I'm an adult, but I'm his kid and he cares. But for whatever reason, Cody doesn't care. Oh, I know the reason. It has nothing to do with them being an adult. It has everything to do with them not obeying him. So Christine reminds us that he thought, not Christine, Janelle reminds us that he thought that her boys should move out, but she needed to protect them and that there was no way that she was just going to toss them out there, especially with the pandemic going on. She didn't want them to leave until they were ready to leave. Janelle is being a good parent. Janelle is making sure that when her kids leave, that they will be financially stable, that they will be able to maintain their households, that they won't be struggling. This is when the dodo bird says that he is currently not talking to Gabe or Garrison that much. I don't quite understand why he always just says Gabe and Garrison when at this point it was the other kids as well. But he is so focused on Gabe and Garrison because unlike Christine's kids, he cared more about Janelle's. My opinion, you tell me. He says it's a relationship where you just have to do a lot of work. So do the work. Be a father. That was the beginning of 2021. This man has held a grudge towards his kids for four daggone years. Four. Even now. He's still not talking to a lot of them. I listened to an interview from Extra. If I remember, I'm going to put it in the comment section so you could watch it yourselves, where Christine and Janelle were talking to the interviewer and the interviewer was asked, have things gotten any better? And they said no. At this point, this is after Garrison's passing and Cody still has not made an effort to get it right with his kids. What is wrong with him? He admits that at this point, they need therapy. We heard that clown say that he should go to therapy with Christine when she was ready to leave with Truly. 
Now here you are saying you would do therapy with the boys because they're not talking to you. And later he's going to tell Janelle in the next season that he's willing to do therapy with her in order to get her to stay. And yet, since he mentioned all of that in these four years, at no time did he get that process started. But it really doesn't matter whether he would have done therapy or not because he would have tried to control the situation the same way he did with Nancy when he was with Mary. And he said, I'm not talking about that. I don't want to hear you coming down on me. I don't want to hear a bunch of what I haven't been doing right. So Cody can't handle therapy because a part of therapy requires for you to take ownership. A part of therapy for, for, for anyone requires you to do some self-reflection. And he can't reflect on anything that involves him because he feels like he does no wrong. But Cody is a liar. So it sounds good. So I'm going to say, ah, yeah, we should go to therapy. He admits that he's gotten to the point where he's just so angry. And I'm looking at this situation and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, because this is what we do here. I don't feel like it's that deep. Let me explain what I mean by it's that deep. I do not feel like the boys disagreeing with you for them to not be following your rules and your stipulations is a reason for him to be this upset. There are multiple families that during the pandemic did not agree on certain decisions that should be made. There were people who were doing certain things. There were, I had family members that were locked up, not moving, not doing a thing. And I had others, friends and family included, that were doing things, that were going out that were doing brunches if they could, if the place would allow them and going out to eat if they could, if the place would allow them, they were doing stuff. Am I going to not talk to them because they're not doing stuff? No, I'm going to make sure that I'm not physically around them because of fear of me catching something or me spreading something, but I'm not going to talk to them. I'm not going to be like, oh no, I'm not talking to you at all. I'm going to continue to communicate. I'm going to continue to to make sure that that relationship is there despite me not agreeing with certain things. But the bald eagle is acting like his kids came around and plucked one of his feathers when all they did was disagree with him and call him out on it. But the ego that he has can't handle it. Janelle says her kids wonder at this point, should they respect him? That is so deep. That is so deep. And I guess it's something that comes along with narcissistic parents because I sit here and I can't imagine not respecting my father. But guess what? My father shows up. Theirs didn't. Theirs hasn't. He stopped. He dropped the ball. And you have these kids who I don't even know who I'm feeling so bad for because they've been forced to have this man who is so ego driven, who is so much about himself that he doesn't even realize that he's the one that tore about this family. Not Christine, not the other moms, not the other kids. It was him. That comment is deep. And if Cody were to watch that, he wouldn't even be able to marinate it on it because instead he would think that that was Janelle talking crap about him when what she was doing was saying, look, at this point, so much damage has been done that my kids don't know who you are. They don't know how to respect you because they don't respect the things that you say and do. She says at this point, the boys have moved out. So she asks Cody what he's going to do because several of his children are at odds with him due to how things went down. She doesn't tell us his answer to that. Which I'm thinking he didn't have one. And I don't blame them. Those kids saw not just how things went down as far as Cody uh, going to the homes, but they saw the things that he said about them, the things that he said about their mothers and how he was there for Isabel. He likes to say that the mom's trash talked him, but he did this. 
Their kids have noticed that their father plays favorites. Their kids have noticed that their father is okay with spending all of his time with the feather crew and that he didn't try with them even before the pandemic. So that's the end of that and we get to Thanksgiving. Janelle lets us know that the rules for Thanksgiving were handed out two to three weeks before Thanksgiving. Her boys, like Christine's kids, said, we can't do this because the list apparently was astronomical. There was a whole bunch of things up there. And I think that TLC, instead of uh, having Janelle read it and you not play everything that she was reading off, you should have allowed us to hear the entire list because it was multiple pages. Bald Eagle tells us that Janelle is saying that she's doing all of these things, but her boys aren't. Her boys. They're his boys too. But he's always going to say their kids, their sons. Talking about the moms, their girls. Their sons were doing some of the things that he requested. And they weren't doing others. But to be honest, the bald eagle wasn't doing any of it either. There were multiple instances where he was not doing some of the things that we later heard listed off that list that he claimed that he had been doing for over six months at that point. We saw him walk into Janelle's house and immediately hug her and request hugs from the other kids, even though he told us, according to that list, that when you come from outside, you're supposed to take off your shoes and you're supposed to take off your clothes and change them and do all these other things. Yet we did not see him leave his shoes outside nor do the other stuff we saw robin when janelle brought the birthday gift for her diving into the box she didn't let the box sit out there outside for several hours she didn't even wipe it down and janelle even made mention of it which means the bird wasn't doing things on the list either but we're supposed to believe that she was Suki points out that Janelle walked off after they had that meeting about their Thanksgiving plans and that the bald eagle did nothing. And he's sitting there perturbed and confused on why Suki would say that and what he's supposed to do. Suki says, as her husband, run after her. <laughs> no, no. That was his response. There is no loyalty because I've already gone through this whole thing and I'm not being supported. How long can you be betrayed in a situation there, where there is a refusal to either communicate, to understand, or to partner? They communicated and they understood. You just didn't like what they were saying to you. That does not mean they did not communicate with you. Suki's so like, okay, so are you saying that they're not being loyal? You judge. You judge, okay? I'm not reaching out to them. I'm like actually relieved. And I'm giving them this, this grin, this bleep grin out of sarcasm. You know, the shining one, the have a good Thanksgiving. He gave them that out of, out of sarcasm, out of hurt, out of anger. But there's no reason for him to be hurt. There are a lot of times that I personally haven't spent Thanksgiving with family members. I haven't spent Thanksgiving with my brother since my son was like five. I'm lying. <laughs> This is why you got to stay on your notes. I haven't spent Thanksgiving with my, my brother since my son was like in the fifth grade, right? He's in the 12th grade now. Do you think that my brother is upset with me or is offended because I have not spent Thanksgiving with him? Because we haven't spent certain holidays together? No. It's life. 
it's what happens. He has his things. He has his friends. We don't live in the same place. Same thing with my sister. My sister, she lives, you know, somewhere else. I don't want to say where she lives. I'm glad she's safe. That might give you a clue where she lives. I'm happy that, you know, she has created her own life where she's at and she has her friends where she's at. And with that being said, I don't always get to see her for Thanksgiving. I think the last time I had Thanksgiving with her was maybe the year before the pandemic. Guess what? She's not mad at me because I haven't had Thanksgiving with her. It's life. He says, but I'm actually wondering what Thanksgiving would be like without them. What it would be like if they weren't there. Boom. There you have it. As much as he wants to sit there and be upset, he's actually enjoying the thought of them not spending Thanksgiving with them, which is why when it actually happens, we see him talking about how good it is and how peaceful it is and all that other stuff. Because even though he's, he's upset, he just wants something to be upset about. Mary expresses frustration because they wanted the rules and then they got them and they didn't follow them. Any of them. It doesn't make sense to her. And it doesn't make sense to us that Mary didn't see years ago that the man didn't want her. It doesn't make sense to us that Mary didn't see that Cody and his bird played her. And it doesn't make sense that she thought that the bird spoke Cody when what she was actually doing was inserting herself into their dynamic. So there's a lot of things that don't make sense. It also doesn't make sense that this family has lied to us from the moment that they appeared on our screens. Bald Eagle feels like they're being jack wagons. Once again, he says these disparaging things and then acts like he doesn't get why they're upset with him. This is you talking crap about them. We get on the subject of Janelle and Christine and their bond. Janelle reminds me in this instance why she gets on my nerves sometimes. Because at this point, Janelle is still standing by her man. Janelle and Christine didn't always get along, but they worked things out over the years. And they were there for each other. But Cody, rather than seeing this as the sister-wife dynamic or what it should be, sees it as them creating cliques and being bullies, something that they both say is false. Janelle admits that they may have hated each other in the beginning. She laughs about it. But seeing how Christine treating her treated her kids and was there for her kids and how she fit in, fit in the family changed that. She thought Christine was a princess and she was wrong. Why did it take for Christine to do stuff for Janelle in order for Christine to see that Janelle wasn't a princess? I didn't like that. I think that it's very clear that Christine, despite her faults, loved those kids and had a good heart, period. It shouldn't be, oh, just because she did this for me, then she's great. We see a clip of Gabe sticking up for Christine and we see the bald eagle being angry. He was trying to badmouth her and Gabe refused to hear all of that. Suki asks Christine about Janelle because she's seeing some parallels with them. And Christine says Janelle's di dynamic is different from hers. Amazing that Christine could see that about Janelle, but it took years for Janelle to see certain things about Christine. And as they're talking, I'm sitting here and I'm remembering that there's so many instances where these ladies simply don't advocate for each other. Cody is asked about his feelings towards Janelle. Bald Eagle says their relationship is more practical. He's then asked because of the way that he's describing it and the way that she's described it, if he is in love with her. He doesn't say yes. Instead, he says, Janelle wouldn't say that she's in love with me either. Meaning, in this most recent season, in season 19, where he's trying to tell us that Maddie lied and told her mom that he didn't love her, that he's saying here that he's not in love with her, which is one of the many reasons why Maddie probably said that. Suki later asks Janelle about her physical relationship with Cody. She says they're good. Christine says Janelle is not the type of woman that needs a man to do things for her. 
She just does it for herself. Christine wanted more from Cody and expected more from Cody than Janelle did. I think Janelle was so accustomed, and I've said this before, to the ain't poop guys in her life that she thought that Cody was just this stand-up man, this great father, and it took for her kids to not receive the little bit of care that they were receiving before in order for her to look at the bigger picture. Christine's like, look, I was tired of putting his needs before my own, that I've considered myself a basement wife for most of my marriage. She's always, you know, put herself last, things that we've already said. It wasn't fair to her. Suki then asked Janelle if there's some type of hierarchy. I always say that word wrong. Mm -mm. And Janelle says, not in our families. Janelle, what are you talking about? Come on, Janelle, tell the truth. There was a hierarchy. There's a reason why you all didn't get along with Mary. Because in the beginning, Mary thought that she was the top wife. Mary was the one that was supposed to be gaining favor by bringing all these women to Cody or by allowing him to uh, marry so that he could love her more. Because that's what's pushed. I do not like Janelle invalidating Christine's feelings. Suki's like, how isn't there a hierarchy or something like that when she feels so lonely? How does she? How is it like that if she felt all alone? And Janelle says, you know, I, I feel like she's coloring the experiences with her perspective now. I'm not saying she didn't. She never said anything. She would complain maybe to Cody, but she never said anything. Janelle, we've been watching this at this point for 16 seasons. And we've seen her say something time and time again. So what are you talking about? Janelle, you know that Christine was complaining. You later threw her under the bus and said it. And I'm sure that you told it to the bald eagle because he said you did. And I'm sure that the bald eagle told you of her complaints because as you said, he leaks like a sieve. You then get this fool. You know, I was surprised at Christine talking about being the basement wife. Uh, you know, I... I, I didn't know that she felt that way. And I felt like Janelle and even Mary were like, you know, well, we'll just deal with the dysfunction or the things that don't work. And Christine was just like, oh, I'm not going to do that. But I know, I, I know, I think it, it unraveled it for Cody, you know. This memory of the past with the family, this time in his head, it was so hard for Christine. And he started losing, you know, his sight of like the like the big picture that we talk about, you know, like we're one family. That didn't have anything to do with Christine. That had everything to do with Cody. So what is Robin talking about? Number one, you weren't there. So shut up. Number two. Christine sat there all those years and suppressed her feelings. So don't act like she stopped doing what she was supposed to do or expected to do when she did. The bald eagle says for 10 years, Christine fulfilled a role where she lightened the burden. Then she didn't want to do it anymore. And that's the problem for him. She changed. The problem is she changed and she felt like she deserved more. The bird then tells us this whole story about how she and her kids were treated differently and the bullying and all this stuff. We have seen how this family included your kids. We've seen how they gave up their time for you, how they went to court to support you, how they were there for you and showed up for you for this adoption, how they allowed you to marry their husband. Stop changing the narrative. Kids will be kids just because they get in a little disagreement here or there or there are times where maybe they're not so nice to each other doesn't mean that they're being bullies to your kids. It means they're being mean kids to each other because if McKelty, who's not adopted, loves to tell us that she didn't feel included in all those other things, then guess what? It has nothing to do with you.
When you have a family that large with that many kids, I'm sure there's various times where a lot of those kids at various points have felt left out. Prime example, the younger kids dynamic isn't the same as the older kids. It's not. But we're going to act like the bird is the only one who is, is had to struggle. But it's been really painful to her. It's been really hard for her and her kids. They then show the bird lying to her kids about the family not wanting to spend the holiday with them. That's not how you present it. And as they're showing that, before they even start, the bird is preparing herself for her next performance. She keeps doing like this, fiddling with her stiff curls, doing like this to the curl. Like, we can't see the hair in the back of your head. What are you moving? She's <coughs> clearing her throat. My littlest doesn't remember the name of her siblings. That's your fault. That's the bird's fault. You grab a photo album. You bring out the photo album the same way you did when you try to program Brianna to know that Cody was daddy. You pull out the photo album and you point out who's who. You pick up your, your iPhone because we know that that's what y'all have. You do a video call. You get on Zoom. You put forth effort and you stop expecting for everybody to come and land on your stoop. You do something other than lay on your back. I'm sorry, but I got to say it because I'm tired of her sitting here acting like everybody's supposed to come to her and she doesn't have to do her part. She's a child. Teach her. Teach her who her siblings are. Because it's, you know, we're just not seeing each other. And, you know, my older kids, they don't know what to do with the decisions that have been made. They don't know what to do because the bird made this personal when it wasn't personal. Christine said that Isabel wanted to come to the house and hang out with the kids. That truly wanted to come to the house and hang out with the kids. She didn't say anything about Gwen, but those other two did. So it's obvious that they wanted to be around the others. They don't, you know, they don't know how to compute it. They're like, this is our family, you know. Why are we choosing not to be together? The bald eagle then comes in and says, she came into this family with cap in hand. I don't remember where I saw it. I think I saw it in the comments somewhere where said somebody says, yeah, cap in hand to collect the money. <laughs> <laughs> she was ready to co collect that check. <laughs> she came to the family cap in hand, telling her children very specifically, you will accept this family and you will treat these other women as mothers. That's a lie. And you will treat these other kids as siblings. But the rules weren't required from the rest of the family to accept her in some way. Yes, they were. You forced her and her kids down the other family members' throats from the very beginning. You were taking your girls to go and babysit. Yes, they were. They were forced. So don't act like this didn't happen because those other moms could have easily told you, no, my girls aren't going with you. But that's not what they did. But there he goes rewriting the narrative. The bird then talks about how upset she was about being blamed for things because we show that we see the clip of her and Mary talking. And she says that a wife that is controlling enough to affect other the relationships is a bad person. And that's why she took offense with it. But that's exactly what she is. And that's what she did. She controlled these relationships in various ways. She infringed upon their time. She did things that created problems. She then says that she'll help any one of those kids trying to have a conversation with their dad to make sure it's safe for them. Why? So you can insert yourself in that too? Those kids know how to speak for themselves. They're very intelligent kids. And I would think that if they want to have a serious relationship with their father, that they would want to do it with their mom around. Suki, who's apparently following this crap, says, how about making it safe for you? You guys have 
never noticed. <laughs> You guys ever notice about how whenever the bird is about to cry that she covers her nose? Why is she covering her nose? Tears don't come from your nose. So I don't know why she covers her nose. <laughs> they come from your eyes. Cover your eyes. <laughs> she then takes a tissue and wipes her nose, but I don't know why. Then she takes that same tissue that she used to wipe her nose to then take it to her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> gosh, 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 I don't think I've ever cried so much in an interview. You're right. <laughs> because you're not crying. <laughs> but... Go ahead, bird. Fake it till you make it because the otherwise aren't here to watch your performance. So go ahead and give us the best performance of your life. I can't say, you know, that it's been like that all the time, but you know, there have been a lot of unsafe spaces for me, yes. And I just, you know, I just want people to see me as who I am. I want them to see that, you know, that I am, you know, that I am, you know, that I love this family, that I'm committed to them, but, you know, that I do anything for them, uh, that I love them, and that I want the relationship. <sighs> drains christine says in the beginning things were hard for everybody not just the bird and her kids because she's sitting here trying to play y'all <laughs> she's sitting here trying to play victim <laughs> it's so funny when tears come out when i'm faking robin <laughs> she's sitting here trying to play victim but her kids went through things too because they lost their father even more and they already were losing him. Cody says, you know, it's a pecking order. And he talks about how different sets of wives were, you know, mean to each other. And that at this point, he only believes Mary wants to be her friend. And that's because the other people see through it. Janelle isn't sure if she wants to have a relationship with the bird. I wish Janelle said why. Because for her to say that, that means you don't trust her. Which she later says it in other episodes, but she should have said it there. But Janelle was still thinking about being the family, so whatever. Suki says, Robin, you're the only one that's having a fully functioning relationship with Cody. <gasps> She takes a deep breath like this is horrible news. And she starts again. It makes me angry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, bleep. I'm sorry. <laughs> Gosh, how am I going to get through this interview? I can't stop. I can't, I can't stop crying. Suki's like, you said this makes you so angry. Why does it make you so angry? I just don't know why they're not figuring this stuff out, you know, and taking and, and, and talking and, and finding, you know, finding their compromise and finding things that they, uh, you know, finding things that they love about each other. And I, 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 I can't fix it for him. I, I can try. I can try to persuade. I can try to influence. I can beg. I can, um, I can, um, Suki says, that's a lot of heavy lifting. She says, it's my family. Which please? Please. Cut the crap. You can, I can, I'm trying. I can, I'm trying. 
If you were really trying, you would have called Cody out on his crap a long time ago, but you did it. So I don't believe that you're trying. Only reason why you would try now is because you want to keep the funds in the house. Christine's like, excuse me. Ooh, excuse me. I did not mean to burn that. Christine's like, look, we're divorced. The bird says they're not that their marriage was done by church officials and that they haven't been granted a divorce. Christine's like, I'm not trying to hear all that. I'm not a member of their church. I haven't been a member of the church in a long time. We know that to be true because they weren't even going to church once they left their community. They did the little fake church in their house for a little bit and then it went away really quickly. She has no interest in hearing what their church has to say. She said, God is fine with me just wanting to be happy. I believe that. She doesn't need somebody else to tell her her marriage is over because it's over. Cody says whether she'll go on to the afterlife with him is beyond his understanding. That's in God's hands, not his. She doesn't believe in it anymore. Christine says as far as she is concerned, they are divorced and they are completely separate. And they are because she's gone. Y'all didn't mean for this to be this long. The next one won't be this long. I'm really excited to get out of this season so I can finish up what I started with 17 since I didn't finish 17 and I, I came in the middle of recording that. Thank you so much for being with me. Put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you thought about this not so tell all. <laughs> Until next time.